There you go. Good morning. On behalf of the RDIC and Southeast Cornerstone Public School Division, my name is Jeff Cameron, and it's my absolute pleasure to introduce Mr. Don Britt. Mr. Britt uh, has been a longtime music teacher and minister in our area, and uh, it's a pleasure to have you here today, Don, and um, looks Thank like you. you're driving there, so uh, I'm just going not, to... Not, uh, the car's not moving. Car's oh. not moving. Okay, so I'm just going to start with so I'm still for the kids out there. So you want to be a music teacher? Uh, tell us what it looks like. Uh, Dawn, we'll let you take her away. Thanks. Sure. Thank you, Jeff. Thanks so much. It's wonderful to be with you, and thank you for this this privilege. Um, yeah, I did another career related video where uh, I don't think I was practical enough. So I think. If somebody's watching this about uh, about being a music teacher, you know, maybe it's good to start with some practical stuff. And I can only speak with integrity to what it's like to be a private music teacher. If you're hooked into the school system and an education degree, that's a different kettle of fish. Depending on where you're at, the things can connect, overlap, because especially in rural areas, um, private music teachers often are are hooked into schools. I've had the privilege of being involved in some capacity with five schools um because i'm in rural saskatchewan the the urban reality could could be quite different but if you are considering being a music teacher uh it could be a, a secondary income it could be a full career here's a couple of practical things that i really wish i had known starting off um and it all depends on if your reality is urban or if it's rural um if it's urban, let's start there. Uh, if you want to be a private music teacher, piano, any instrument, whatever, if you're in a city, just hanging out your shingle is, you know, it, it, it's not so easy just to put up signs or obviously online stuff, maybe easier with social media now. Um, but you in, in cities, there are places, uh, and I'll name one, I have, I have no affiliation with the business, but there's a, a franchise of music stores called Long and McQuaid. And they have teaching schools. Um, there's one in Regina. There's there, there's different locations. And you can go there and for a fee, you can actually teach out of their location. Um, and that's something at one point I was living in Calgary. I, I didn't know about this. I found out years after I moved. And if I had known about it, uh, my life there could have been better uh, in a lot of ways. So that's one possibility if you're a private teacher um, living in a city. Look at hooking into existing infrastructures um, and a, a place like Lama, Lama McQuaid is, is one example. If you're living in the rural reality um, or small, very small town reality, uh, as I do, then things are different and you need to reach out to local people. Um, and I guess even more than just what, what being a music teacher looks like, I guess I'm, I'm pleading with people who are considering this on any level to reach out uh, an incredible resources schools, go and have a chat with your local principal. I think you'll find that they're happy to talk to you and they, they can have some wonderful connections. They can point you in the right direction. Here's another example, um, local music festivals. I can't stress this enough. Um, the, the, the president of the local music festival or officers of the music festival, when you're talking to them, like bring them cookies, sit down and talk to them. and say what does this look like you can ask questions that are sort of awkward in some situations like what's the going rate for lessons in these parts you know um and the it's amazing how much information you'll get practical rubber hits the road information from your local music festival and the last thing i'd like to say about on this point and then i'll just throw it back to you jeff we can go wherever you want um is this old saying, you know, you have to prepare for success. Failure requires no preparation whatsoever. How busy do you want to be? You know, lay out your week, fill up the slots. Is it uh, after school stuff? How many hours? Again, is it a secondary income? Do you want to slowly work towards it being the full thing? Um, I, I would I would have a schedule first before I even try to fill it because you might be surprised at how many people are willing to dive in and uh, and and jump at the chance to fill up your slots. You, you need to be ready and know exactly what's available before you even put yourself out there at all. 
And I guess those are just a couple of practical things I really wanted to put out there at the beginning because I can sort of wander uh, off into very impractical paths very easily. Um, so I just thought I would chuck those out uh, that out at the beginning. So over to you, Jeff. Take, take it away, Bill. What about your education uh, training to be a music teacher, to get into the music industry? <laughs> You don't really need any uh, in terms of if you're a private teacher, you know, it, that that's an, a, a huge question. Now, I happen, happen to have an undergrad. I have a B.A. in music, um, which worked out well for me. Um, and I, I think it was very, very helpful. Many piano teachers have Royal Conservatory training. Uh, you can go up to grade 10 in Royal Conservatory. And if, boy, if you get your grade 10, which includes theory, uh, includes examinations, uh, obvious recitals many you know practical playing exams and 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 uh that's not just for piano it's for any instrument or voice then you are good um so there isn't private music teaching you can hook into some organizations out there but you don't require any specific uh credentials as you would if you're a teacher with um in the school system with an education degree then you have to vigorously follow whatever uh, stuff is laid down for you. Yeah. Can you tell us a little bit about your journey, where where you went to school, well, Don? And... Oh, sure. Yeah. Uh, well, I grew up in Cape Breton Island, which is a hotbed of the arts. Uh, I grew up going to kitchen parties, and uh, my father would take me to uh, a friend of his named Freddie Amode, who uh, traveled the states as a fiddler. Um, and uh, and they would you know fiddling and uh, and dancing and the house party was a big thing there. So I was immersed in music uh, very early. I also was hooked into a church. And uh, my first job was um, I, I was a boy. And sadly, on a Mother's Day weekend, our uh, our organist passed away overnight on a Saturday. And on Mother's Day morning, I was called by the chairman of the board and I was asked to play at the service. And um, everybody was weeping bitterly and I was crying myself because we lost this dear, dear soul. And that's how I started playing. Um, I started playing for weddings. Once you put yourself out there, if you show that, you know, you can do that sort of thing, um, then you will get, you know, build it and they will come. You'll, you'll, you will get more calls. One of the most practical things from a performance point of view is I got involved in a theater company and that taught me a whole lot of stuff fast. Um, you know, we weren't big time, but it was all paid events. We would have eight or so productions going at once in rep uh, in the summertime. And boy, you learn fast. You're part of a pit crew. You're, you're playing for a musical or whatever and nothing stops. You know, well, here's a, a practical tip. Uh, it's hard to break. All of us have this problem in the music world. We stop and correct our mistakes. Okay. We make one mistake, which is usually a pitch. We hit the wrong note. And then we add a second mistake, a rhythm, a rhythm mistake, because we repeat it. You don't do that. If you're part of a band, you can stop, pick a spot and jump back in. There's, there's a practical tip in the music world. And I, I learned that very, very fast. Um, but in terms of how I got into music teaching, it's uh, it's very interesting. I got married and I married uh, a woman in Oxbow and she was a paramedic. So uh, at the time. And uh, so I had to move to her. She was stuck to with it being within five minutes of, you know, the ambulances. So I moved to Oxbow and as a wedding present, very crafty wedding present, she bought me a piano and she did up all these posters and she put my name out there. Uh, to do lessons. So it was sort of done for me. Uh, and that's how I got into music teaching years ago. Uh, and it's been uh, an amazing journey ever since. Can you tell us a little bit about the schooling involved that you actually had? Oh, sure. Yeah, I, I uh, well, the, the only related stuff was uh, my undergraduate degree. Uh, as you mentioned, I went I went into ministry, so I did a master. I did I went to seminary afterwards after my undergrad uh, to go into ministry, and I was years in ministry. But my undergrad uh, was ended up being a BA in music. I actually was in a what something called a Bachelor of Music Education for the first two years, um, and back, back then there was actually a four year degree program you could take with an education component in it. 
And I took the first couple of years of music education and I was miserable because I learned in that, that it wasn't the path for me. Uh, being, say, a band teacher is a phenomenal thing. A couple of band teachers in particular have been major influences in my life, including one who instilled in me a drive to excel um, and, and, and not taking second best. I didn't always live up to that, but I tried to. She took us to the regional championships. We went to, I'm dating myself here, Expo 86, and competed in an international competition with our band. Um, I have nothing but respect for band teachers. They have helped shape who I am, but it wasn't my path. So then I switched out of music education. I took a BA in music and I got a second major in English literature, which remains a great passion of mine. But in practical terms, looking back, it might've been helpful if I just sort of stuck the course and did the four-year music education degree. Um, but that's the, the practical education I had, which. Uh, uh, certainly has helped me in many ways uh, as I moved into music teaching years later. Rewards, Don. What can you tell us about rewards? The rewards are, uh, it's a cornucopia of things. It, it's an immense privilege. You're being, um, well, you're being invited to help um, in the formation of mostly kids. I've had a number of adult students, but mostly kids in a way that most educators don't get. I mean, it's not a, at all unusual. I mean, I've been in quite a number of instances. I have had the same student for 10 plus years. And if you're with someone, say, from the age of th they're, they're seven to 17, it's an amazing journey. And it, I tell you, it really hit home just how much of a privilege this is when sort of the, the, the first group of students I'd worked with uh, started moving into uh, getting ready for university. And I mean, quite a number of times, I don't know how many times I was asked to do letters of reference, right? As countless people are. But then I sat down and realized just how well, you know, it hit me uh, on an emotional level, if that makes sense, how well I'd gotten to know these kids, how I had watched them become and how I it contributed in whatever extent to their becoming. You know, I'll give you one example. Uh, I had uh, one, one a young woman came back to me, uh, this is three or four years after I finished teaching her, and she went for a job interview and she was terror stricken, she said. She sat there, she said she was shaking like a leaf and she didn't think she'd be able to put two words together in the interview. And then she said, um, then I remembered something you said to me. And I said to myself, well, Mr. Britt said that I got up on stages at music festivals and I performed and that is one of the most horrifying things imaginable. And then she realized that sitting in a room with a couple of people talking about a career opportunity was nothing <laughs> compared to getting up on stage at recitals or music festivals and putting yourself out there. And she went in cool as a cucumber and she got the job. That's just an example of, of the amazing privilege of helping in some way and watching people become who they are. There's always challenges and stressors, Don, I guess. Could you tell us a little bit about those? I, I can give you a funny example uh, to start. Uh, again, I, I mentioned that my wife was a paramedic. You know, what I wasn't prepared for, Jeff, was the emergency music lesson. Because we would get close to music festival time, right? And then I would get these calls that would say, where someone would say, I can't get part C. I can't get section C. I just can't get it. And so sometimes they would come over to my place or I would rush off uh, to their house. And I came back from one of these emergency lessons. Um, and my wife said, you know, you should get a music ambulance. And she painted a picture uh, of in my mind of a music of an ambulance, but with notes and like treble clefs and uh, staffs all over it, you know, so you could rush off. <laughs> um, so one, certainly one of the practical things is the stress and we all deal with stress in different ways, right? Uh, one of the hardest things is when somebody has, um, uh, you know, uh, what do you do with someone who has a meltdown? What if you, what stage fright can be a horrible thing. You know, it, it really can. And having the, 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 being with them in a, in a, in a situation of grace and realizing I've only had to do it twice that I can remember, but where we just threw in the towel 
because I knew it was too much. And, um, and I, and I let it go and I, and I withdrew the person from that, uh, category from from that performance because almost always though i've been able to get them to go on because i believe heart mind body and soul that getting up there and you know kind of facing the dragon or whatever uh, you know is, is an amazing character building thing and you realize afterwards almost always well that that wasn't as bad as i was making that out to be you know mm-hmm. um those kind of stressors are there and i'll, and I'll talk about uh since you asked about stresses so i'll I'll, I'll, I'll name a huge one. Um, I was very fortunate when I started music teaching, I was riding the coattails in my own small way of an oil boom um, that was happening in our, re- well, across the West, really. Um, and it was amazing how much disposable income was running around. Uh, before long, I had 50 some students one on one. I was involved in a few schools and some choir programs and, um, and it was amazing how often, you know, uh, someone would drop in and talk to me about music lessons. And as they go out as an afterthought, they would say, oh, you know, how much are lessons? Because it wasn't even a consideration. Uh, and my wife said, just quite a witty soul. And, and she said afterwards, you know, you should you should double your rate <laughs> because, you know, so I, I had no looking back now, boy, looking back now, um, I realized just how blessed and fortunate I was because things are very, very different. You know, belts have tightened with a vengeance everywhere. Um, and COVID came along and, and it's a drastically different reality. And uh, it's far, far more challenging uh, to entertain getting into something as esoteric as the arts in any capacity right now. Thanks so much, Don. I guess that would lead me into asking you then, if there's some students out there that are, are going to watch us in 2023, what would you say are some opportunities in the music field if someone wants to go to university and get their degree or uh, in that area? What what are some opportunities right now? Would you suggest or that that you know of? The opportunity above all else that I would stress, if if you are if, if this is your heart cry. And it, and, and it better be your heart cry. We can come back, come back to that. I'll, I'll try to just address your question. Um, maybe we could end on the heart cry thing, Jeff, uh, wh- whatever you think. But the number one advice I would have is flexibility. Um, I had uh, a, a, a private music teacher came and addressed our class. He was a friend of the professor in one of my music classes at a university, uh, Acadia is where I went, a university in Nova Scotia. And he was really trying to get us to put on a practical hat you know, many of us wanted to be performers, uh, musicians, uh, y- you know, uh, there was, a, uh, the, you know, the, um, the, there are jazz musicians in the group. That's all that's all they wanted to do. Um, and he was saying, look, be flexible. I mean, you're young. Would you be willing to move to some smaller area for even five years? to, you know, build up an income and kind of establish yourself. And then you'll have a resume saying I was doing music teaching in this area, then move to the city. You know, then he said there were people who almost hissed when he said, he said, can you handle teaching country music? And then, <laughs> that's that's almost an obscene thing to say to a jazz musician, Jeff. It, 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 it really, really is. Uh, and guess what? I've taught an awful lot of country music, um, an awful lot especially singers, as singers and, you know, when in Rome, right, do as the Romans do. Um, yeah. So the flexibility is absolutely essential. And often I find that music people, artistic people can be quite inflexible. You know, you can have a strong vision, but that vision like, like attracts like. So artsy people, you know, you'll find more of them in cities, you know, and places to go and, and, and to pubs and to places of assembly and whatever, schools of music or whatever. Um, so they all go there, right? But they're not willing so often to be flexible. I, 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 you know, the flexibility is absolutely essential. And can you think even short term? Um, that's a very practical thing. I mean, if you're 17 or 18 years old, trust me, when you're 23 or 25, you will still be, please believe me, very young. And if you're willing to kind of follow a path that could take you to places, I, you know, I, I have tried to get uh, guitar teachers. I, I don't know how many people I, I, I have would call me and saying, oh, you teach piano, you, you teach voice, great. Uh, do you teach guitar? I, 
I don't play guitar. Um, and I know for a fact that a guitar teacher could have come into my area and I could have filled their schedule for them. You know, I, I, I really could have. I could have got them started. Um, none were willing to come from outside to our quiet little neck of the woods, you know. Um, so flexibility above all, look at opportunities and realize that if you find yourself in a place that in, in terms of your own life ambitions might not be ideal, it can be for a good time, not a long time. And also once you're there, you might find surprising connectivity with your passions and amazing people. Who knows? You just might stay. Wow. That sounds uh, wonderful. Don, you've sh certainly fill this in and i'm sure if there's you know there's lots of students out there that uh, are in music and so forth so hopefully someone some people watch this and maybe give them some ideas uh, mark michael do you have any questions no i don't have any questions uh, don it sounds like it's something that you're very passionate about um thank you appreciate you spending your time with us here today and uh one thing I maybe would ask is uh, if, if you're making a living at it, uh, it's minimum wage, is it a little bit better than that? Or what are you making for, for a salary of, in the course of the year? I was charging $38 an hour, and I'm in, in small town Saskatchewan. And I think there are other teachers that were a bit more than me. So I don't know what the uh, urban reality is, but I know it's generally a lot more. Uh, I mean, there, there are, and it depends on how, how um, uh, there's a drum teacher I, I've heard in the city. Um, it was just amazing what they were getting. But people were, were traveling to him, apparently an amazing virtuoso uh, who's willing to teach. That doesn't often go hand in hand, uh, virtuosos, and should often just be playing. The best musicians I know very often aren't necessarily the best teachers. Uh, but that's a, that's a different story. Uh, but you can get a lot more than that. And and I've been fortunate enough to be involved in a couple of choir programs and musical theater events, children's theater stuff that will pay you quite a bit more. Um, you can certainly make a, a living, you know, certainly uh, of, of well above minimum wage doing this sort of stuff, even in small venues as as I'm in. Yeah. No, no trouble. Yeah, it's good to be that practical. We should be. Yeah, it is. Well, Don, on behalf of uh, Southeast Cornerstone Public School Division and the RDIC and all of the students out there, thank you so much for your time today and all the best in family and health moving forward. Thank you, Jeff. I really enjoyed this. Thanks for having me and all the best to everyone. Yeah, take care. Take care.